Well, here we are on Lesson 20, and it's on the Peloponnese Peninsula. Where is the Peloponnese Peninsula? Well, let's look on your map. Well, better yet, look on the globe, and you'll see where the Mediterranean Sea is, and you'll see some peninsulas, like three of them that come out into the, into the sea. One is the Iberian Peninsula, and that's where Spain and Portugal are. And then you'll see a little boot type comes out, and that's kind of where Italy is now today. And then you'll see a bigger one that's called the Balkan uh, Peninsula, or the Peloponnese Peninsula, a different name for it. Um, so this is where um, it was named after the island of Pel Pelops, which was kind of like a myth mytho mythological um, person, and he was a legendary hero but they call it the um, Balkan Peninsula too. Well, you'll see also there's the Isthmus of Corinth that uh, connects Greece to the uh, outside the Balkan Peninsula there, follow along, and then you'll see some gulfs. Gulfs are bodies of water that come in to that area that go around the Peloponnese Peninsula. And they are um, the Gulf of Corinth, and that's in the northeast, and Patras on the northwest, Ionian Sea on the west, and the Mediterranean Sea in the south, and the Aegean Sea on the east. A lot of bodies of water around there, too. Well, this peninsula is about 8,278 um, square miles, it says. About the length, about as big as the state of New Jersey. So not that big, but pretty big for a peninsula. There's many rivers and forests on this peninsula, and also um, the mountain range is there. And so it kind of isolates people. So there are people of very different type of cultures located on this peninsula. The, the peninsula had many city-states back, back in ancient history, and also beautiful coastlines uh, along, and you'll see, especially along the Mediterranean Sea. Well, let's go back in history, and you already learned a little bit about this, as you remember, as do you remember the Minoans in Crete, the island of Crete there, which is close to there, and the bull jumpers and all the things that they did in, the, in that ancient culture? Well, that ancient culture that they found really didn't last so long, and you know the city of Knossos there, um, that we study, and it was destroyed by some people. And these people that destroyed it were the My Mycenaeans. The Mycenaeans moved in, and that's what we're going to be talking about right now, is this Mycenaean culture. And it was the most influential culture in the Mediterranean Sea during this time between 1400 BC to 1100 BC. The Mycenaeans had ships, and they traded at ports. They had horses in battle, and they were feared. That many, many countries feared their armies. So they were, you know, a big thing back in, the, back in those days. The Mycenaean center was at the city of Mycenae, of course, and you can look at that on your map on page 130. And... You'll see there are also some Lion Gate ruins and everything. They, they actually know a lot about the Mycenaeans. And there was a citadel. What's a citadel? You guys should know that. It's a palace. And this palace that they found there was, was very, very beautiful and had a road, a wide 12-foot road leading to it. It had upper um, terraces and lower terraces and a grand staircase of about 40 steps. It was a great archaeological find back then, um, kind of like they found in Kenosis. And they also found writing that was like the writing in Kenosis. And that way it was kind of, they know now, was the beginning of ancient Greek writing. So, so we know when we study Greece, we'll know that they could actually read some of that ancient Greek and find out what they were talking about. Well, they had many um, crafts. They were very civilized. They actually had bathrooms and kitchens and, and storehouses, um, stores, I should say, farms, fishermen, craftsmen, 
And they had cloth and pottery and even schools and tutors back then. So they were pretty civilized among. And so the Greeks looked back at that as being, oh, they are so civilized. You know, the Spartans on the other time were warriors. Remember, they were Greeks too. So you have two different types, types of Greeks. You have those with the Mycenaean background and you have those with the Spartan background. And you put them together and you get great warriors and also great thinkers, huh? So we'll get into later on, and there'll be a lot of great, great Greek thinkers back um, in ancient history. So um, we went over the most important event being that, um, that Battle of Troy. We went over in detail on that, so I'm not going to go over that love and war triangle again. But we want to see, you know, what happened to this Mycenaean culture. In 1100 BC, fire destroyed it because there were barbarians that came in. Um, from the north and probably set the fire. They're called Dorians. The Dorians were considered to the Greeks as a very ignorant people, you know, because they, they didn't read or write or, or all of that. And they didn't have all, all of the things that the Mycenaeans had. But, and they were kind of smelling. They called them barbarians because they would talk like bar, 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 bar. That's what they said. They said, we can't understand them. They talk in a bar, bar language. So they called them barbarians. And they, but they were attacking with weapons and such, and they attacked and, and destroyed most of the Mycenaean, um, or you should say, Mycenae city. And then we have, um, we, we have, of course, the Battle of Troy, where um, Troy is destroyed, and that's not actually in Greece. It's right outside of Greece, though. And then this, and this, but Sparta became a very important city-state for quite a few centuries afterwards. And this was all on this Peloponnese Peninsula. And so let's think about this. So we have Greece, the beginning of Greek history there. And we'll go on and we'll go on because Greece will, fight, will grow and develop into a very, very important world economy. In fact, later on we'll see that Greece will really con have controlled the, ro the world under Alexander the Great. So, well, that's way in the future, so I'm not going to go over that right now. The future for where we're at, of course, you know, the history, we can look back in time and see all, all how this, this culture develops in two different parts of Greece. So war, love and war, you know, affect uh, cultures a lot and history a lot. And so, um, man, kings... The feelings of a king seem to matter. When a king's in love, he'll attack a whole city. <laughs> you know, these things happen because everyone had to follow the king back then. But really, who is our king? Our king, and our Lord and Lord, Lord of Lord and Savior, of course, is Jesus. And God wanted to be king. But of course, the peoples chose their kings and followed kings that had a lots of lots of uh, human problems, don't you think? <laughs> so um, we're going to go on from this, and there's a little story I want to just tell and write tell at the end. Maybe I'll tell it in just a short video because it's one of my favorite stories during this time that talks about, um, that talks, it's actually of Homer, and he wrote the Iliad and the Battle of Troy, but I wanted to go on and talk a little about Homer's Odyssey, um, Odysseys, which is um, uh, very, very important, too. So, anyway, I will. But anyway, so, um, it says, Cent um, contentions are like bars of a cit citadel. What does that mean? Contentions means fighting and more fighting. Kind of put a palace up in bars. You know, that's what happened back then. You had these big cities. But they fell just because of all the contentions of, of um, kings and princes and barbarians, of course. All of that. So that's kind of world history, how world history goes. But God's history, his story is right in the moments within. And those that have found a relationship in God. And we're going to get into some of that very soon.